Konnichiwa and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is the 19th of February, 2012. My name is the J Pop Music Fan. Well, J Pop Music Fan 2781. Or if you want, you just call me Joshua. In this video, we're going to be discussing two topics. The topics in question are going to be the zombie incident, I'll explain that in a minute, and am I wrong for calling the frontman uh, or the lead singer of Feather Side one of the greatest frontmen of all time, punk potentially, or even greatest showman? But I'll explain that when we get to it. First off, Let's talk about the zombie incident. All right, <clears throat> if anybody has actually read my uh, blog on Amoeba, I actually have done this topic once already. The reason I didn't do it here, like right away, is because I was trying to really digest both a comment and I was trying to digest the video but let me explain okay I go on of course uh, CD Japan because I was looking up different items that I want to purchase down the line be it a CD or a concert DVD or just some little knick-knack from a group. One item in particular that I'm looking at getting at some point is the original Chateau de Versailles concert. Which incidentally, <laughs> I found this funny. In US dollars, it, that first one costs more than the limited edition that I got from CD Japan. I thought that was pretty goddamn funny, but nonetheless, it does. So I guarantee it'll be worth it. But anyway, whenever I go look that one up, I always read the customer reviews. Nobody ever does a Neil or review for whatever reason. Probably because they're a little bit more restrictive on how many characters you're allowed to use. Yeah, for those who think that YouTube's restrictive with comments, no, 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 no. That motherfucker, you have to do it. You have to do a review on 200 like characters or less. I'm, I'm not kidding. YouTube, depending on f how they're feeling, will give you between two and 500. I've gotten lucky; it's been mostly 500. But anyway, so I was reading one customer's review, and in the um, review, they mentioned that during the song Zombie, the lead singer, Pomageo, gave a rather offensive gesture. Okay? The gesture, which I'm not going to do because I think everybody knows it by now, or maybe don't, was the middle finger. The irony of this is, and I've read this review a couple of times. On February the 5th, a singer called MIA gave the finger to the crowd at the Super Bowl. Okay? Now think about that while I continue the rest of this. <clears throat> so, I read this and I went, really? He gave the finger? I gotta see this. So I went on YouTube, like I always do, and I looked up the performance of Zombie from Chateau de Versailles. And depending on the video you watch, it happens either between it happens between 
three minutes flat and 319. Again, because I've seen two different versions of the video. <clears throat> and yes, he clears day, flips the bird. Matter of fact, when he gets done flipping it, and it, he doesn't really so much, you know, scope. Boom, he goes and he dances his one hand, it's not holding the microphone around, and then he just ends up with the middle finger in the cue position. And it just stays there for a second. Here's the, the irony of the whole thing. It doesn't bother me as much as it may bother some other people. Let me explain why, though. Okay? First off, I live in America. We have musicians that have dropped the F bomb, both the four letter and the six letter variety. The four, the four letter is fuck, and the second one is a slur against gays I'm not going to use. But Generally, when we hear the word fuck or we see somebody make the, give the middle finger, we don't blink about it. It's no big deal. The funniest part of the whole thing is that the person who did the review was someone from the U.S. Okay? Maybe they were thinking that all Japanese artists are a lot more refined, sophisticated, whatever term you want to use. And the irony is, yeah, they may be, but they can still do things that we wouldn't expect them to. Okay, so he gives the finger. I'm looking at it like, big deal happens with American artists here all the time. Somebody gets pissed off, flips the bird just to do it. I mean, God, for God's sakes. We have, in America, we had the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You know what one of their big deals was? They, they came out buck naked with nothing but a sock hanging on their Johnson. And no one thought anything about that. Trust me. No one. So I guess I failed to see the problem with it. But here's what I am going to do, just so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. In the description down here, I'm going to put a link to one of the clips. Now, I'm going to watch one of them, and I'm going to then tell you exactly in the description, the time in which it happens. But watch like the whole video because it's actually pretty cool. The opening of a Zombie, believe it or not, if you're a Marilyn Manson fan, sounds almost like something out of The Beautiful People. That, that song, what was it called? Beautiful People? Seriously, like I've actually heard the opening guitar riff of that song. I listened to the opening of Zombie and I almost sound identical. But maybe it's just me. And before anybody asks, no, I'm not a Marilyn Manson fan. God. Uh, no, I've, I never was a Marilyn Manson fan. I didn't quite get his stick. But anyway. I'm going to, you know, like I said, I'm going to put a link to one of the videos and you can check it out. And let me know if I'm writing just playing it off like it's no big deal, or if maybe I should have been a little bit more defensive about it. Because I said this in my blog, I just don't see it. And if you'd like, I'll actually drop a link to that particular entry down here, also. Called Examining the Zombie Incident, which will basically tell you everything I just said in this video. Now, speaking of Comerio, and speaking of Versailles, 
let's talk about him. Again, from my Maven blog, I may have made one, probably one of the most controversial statements you will ever find as a music fan, an occasional reviewer of um, albums and CDs and artists. Let's understand something before I go any further. I have been listening to music in general since about 1986. This is 2012, so almost 20, so yeah, about 26 years, give or take. Okay? I think I have the right to make the statement I'm about to make. See, I've listened to a variety of bands, and I've watched a variety of performances, and I've heard a lot of singers who are lead singers in groups. I am of the very firm belief, and I mean this, when it is all said and done, Komajio, the lead singer of Vesai, is going to go down as one of the greatest frontmen slash showmen of my generation. And keep this in mind. I've seen live performances where you got like Peter Gabriel, you know, is the front man for Genesis. I've seen Elton John dressed up in his quirky little outfits. But there's a part of me that thinks that the, I'm kind of laughing when I say this, the almost 37 year old Frontman for her side, you know, I'm sorry. He he literally dances around them in his sleep. And I'm gonna catch a lot of shit for just saying that. I know I am. And this is trust me. You're you're talking to a guy who's listened to damn near every Elton John record you can find, who's Listen to almost every Genesis album, can tell you almost every formation of that group and that group's history. But I'm dead serious. I was watching a video, I was watching the performance for Gekka Ko, and I've seen that on. The DVD that I have, I've watched that at least, God, I don't know, two or three times already. <laughs> and I've seen it here on YouTube. The son of a bitch ain't almost 37 years old, he's more like 27. He, he, he can't be that, <laughs> he can't be that old, no way. I, look. There are people in this country that they were 37 years would not be able to move like this motherfucker. <laughs> Just flat out. And you can accuse me of being probably one of the biggest fanboys, A, of the group, which I will really admit. Or you can just accuse me of really being on that mess. Which I've even said in the blog, A, I'm guilty. But I cannot think, now, before anybody sends me any hate mail, granted, I have really just started really delving into, A, the visual kind of scene and the Japanese music scene, but so far I have, but just from listening to music in general, period, for the better part of almost three decades, I can safely say he's going to be one of the greatest, and in a very odd way, 
one of the most underappreciated in the world. And you know why I say underappreciated? Okay. The group does have what? Fan clubs in 26 countries? But let's ask this honest question and be really whoops and be really honest with yourself. Venusite, right? If any of them walk down the street tomorrow in Philadelphia, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Texas, LA, Chicago, Washington, in any of those states that I mentioned, or any of the provinces in Canada, would we be able to would you be able to recognize them? Chances are probably not. And it's not your fault, and it's not really their fault. What it is, is the, I don't want to blame the record company because they're doing their best, I think. But they, we just need to find a way to really get them to come here again. To my knowledge, their last U.S. tour, especially in this area, was in 2008. Now it's 2012. Sadly, I don't think you're coming here again anytime soon. But it's a darn shame. Because I'm willing to bet that if they got the chance, if the VPQ got the chance to come back here, it'll be a lot of fun. Hell, I'd go to that concert in a minute. I'll say right now, if I got the chance to go to Japan and I got a chance to go to a live show over there, one of their live shows, I would be in awe because it would just be too awesome. It's like, I remember the first time I saw Genesis slide in better in the old veteran stadium. That was being fun. I enjoyed that immensely. Ironically, it was <laughs> one of the, it was part of a tour before the group actually broke up with when Phil Collins was the lead singer. But I would definitely love to be able to go see them live, the other side of the line, because to me, as I've mentioned before, they are the connection. There's, there's a very interesting and very cool connection between those two groups that will never be broken, because as far as I'm concerned, their music styles are very much the same, or very similar. The only difference is, this eye has a very unique stage presence. Genesis was no real bullshit. Well, except for Peter, but we already know how that goes. So, in the description down here will be the links to the performance of Zombie and maybe the two Amoeba books that it did. I want you to check them both out. If you are going to be reading them, however, I do strongly suggest one thing. Please use a um, web browser that has a translator just in... Well, you might not know, actually you won't need it because they are in English. I'm, 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 but, y'all have a good one. Um, the next broadcast of the J. Mello Weekly Recap will be in March. But, I felt necessary to make this video just to uh, give me some time. Oh, one other thing before I forget.
and I'll let you go. This video is the final video you will see with the computer that I'm using currently. Tomorrow uh, morning, no, it's Monday morning, I'm going down to Best Buy to get a new, a brand new computer. So, um, this video is kind of a landmark. It's the last one using this humble little computer that I've had for very part of a good couple of years. I think almost 10. Maybe even more than that. I don't know. Anywho, y'all have a good one. I will talk to you later. Sayonara.